today I'm gonna show you my most recent uh, interesting DIY project to bring this Apple iPod Hi-Fi system back to life or make it a bit more useful. This was released in 2006 and it uses six C batteries um, which I really don't like. So I converted it to use uh, the power delivery USB type C power source. Let me show you. This is a bit more interesting. Hopefully you guys can get inspired and convert other small electronics to be like this. Let me explain. So my first mod to this system was to use PVC pipe placeholders that allows me to use uh, the Nico or the um, lithium ion battery cells. So two of these, because the whole voltage is 1.5 times six, which is nine volts. Uh, but it may over discharge and I still have to go through the trouble of replacing the battery cells anyway, right? Like this. It looks pretty elegant. Well, um, at least looks like the Apple product, but the better option is to use the power delivery trigger. So I bought a bunch of these and I think um, and I, I went through three different models uh, anyway and the, the latest one is uh, the one that allows me to adjust the power output uh, 5, 9, 12, 15 and tw 20 volts. Uh, well, long, stay, long story short, this is the best option. It's more compact and it's a constant 9 volts out of the factory. Let me zoom in so you can see what it looks like. USB type C power delivery. So I soldered the positive and negative, which are connected to, I just figured out the positive and negative connected uh, like this. Of course, I, I'm have to, I'm going to have to drill the exact hole here using my drill press. So this will be a seamless finish with only one USB type C port exposed. Uh, you, all these wires will not be visible at all. So I can use my power banks, the portable power banks from Basius. I test its compatibility with all these power banks and it worked fantastic. The total power consumption is 5.6 watts. I can change songs. It was pretty loud. Anyway, I can even use the anchor one. That shows me the remaining, um, not only the current power consumption, 5.7 watts, and the remaining runtime at 50. 8%. So I, I think I should be able to get more than 15 hours runtime using this battery pack. Any power delivery uh, system will do. And this is the basis one. As you can see, it immediately triggered the, the 9.1 volt and um, 0.7 amps, 29, 30 hours left. So 31 hours when it's not playing. 97%. So I just need to figure out a way to mount the battery banks in the back and have a shorter USB Type-C cable, then it's not going to be visible at all. Um, I also tested all of these compatibilities here, all these, any battery banks that uh, will be able to do USB-C power delivery would be able to work with the system. So this is the only uh, power delivery trigger that would be able to support my build uh, consistently. I tried, the first trip I tried would be able to, you know, sometimes it just, every time I disconnect the power, it will not be able to power on consistently. I have to disconnect all the powers 
and uh, let it sit there for a long time be, to be able to use the iPod uh, system again. So the anyway, coming back to the chip, you can get the five, five watts, I guess doesn't make much sense. You can get a nine, 15, 20 watts pre-build or already jump, jumped like this. Uh, especially the 12 volts or 20 volts can be very helpful if you have uh, the routers you can um, you know power the routers using these battery banks any power delivery battery battery banks banks will be able to power the router uh, off the grid without if, if you have a power outage this is going to be super useful if you have old-fashioned um, boom boxes from Sony like like the portable CD players you can mod the system like so uh, without having to worry about using b rechargeable batteries, I feel like um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the build. I, I can't wait to use my drill press press to create a few holes and uh, fit this thing inside um, and use it around the house with you know chargers. Oh, yeah, forgot to mention. Of course, you can use the power delivery chargers. Uh, the power consumption when it starts up it checks for power um, it's around 14 watts and then it's, it goes down to 7.5 it's now 100% efficient therefore it's actually drawing 5 watts it's quite heavy I can use it as a dumbbell as well so which allows uh, for seamless transition um, the connection on top from the Mac mini from, from the iPod is not the best yeah, I'm not gonna play a lot of music um, because it seems um, I may trigger a copyright. Um, I, anyway, uh, all these uh, little battery banks from Basius, 30 watts, 10,000 milliamps. I suppose this one should be able to provide maybe 10 hours, maybe eight to 10 hours of play time. Uh, I may use this one because not only it's lightweight, I can double click to power off. So if I'm playing the music, I can double click here to power it off. And there's a orange LED. And another press brings the system online again. Uh, that's why I chose this chip, which um, does not require any, uh, you know, downtime. The other one will sometimes will not be on. It will get nine volts output, but somehow, somehow it doesn't work with the iPod um, Hi-Fi system. Oh, anyway, it's uh, like a uh, uh, two thousand six. It's uh, seventeen years old. Still works great. Sounds fantastic. The base port's facing forward. Yeah, I'm still enjoying my iPod Nano thanks to this setup, I guess. Uh, it's um, super helpful. I'm, I'm going to think of more use case for these kind of tiny chips. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you find this review helpful.